And that's Dateline for this Monday. We'll see you again for Dateline Tuesday at 10, 9 central time. Now stay tuned for your late local news. I'm Stone Phillips for all of us at NBC News. Good night. Later, Jay goes ape over buddy star Renee Russo when she joins him for a visit, along with singer Bob Carlyle. Stay up for Jay. Your local news is next. I'm Warner Saunders. How does divorce affect the kids? The tales of a study 25 years in the making. Plus, a high school graduation outing turns dangerous when an amusement park water slide collapses. All that at 10. NBC5 Chicago. Now live. This is the NBC5 News at 10. An emotional scene tonight in Oklahoma City. People gather for a vigil at a place that's become a shrine for those lost in the country's deadliest terrorist act. It was 9.02 a.m. April 19th, 1995. A bomb rocked the Murrah Federal Building, killing 168 people inside. Tonight, Timothy McVeigh stands guilty of the crime. Now jurors must decide whether he should pay with his life. It was an explosion that shook a nation, and tonight we will have complete coverage of the verdict from the 11 counts that Timothy McVeigh was found guilty of to the reaction from Denver and Oklahoma City. And a look at what's next for McVeigh and the other defendant in this case, Terry Nichols. We begin with NBC5 uh, night team reporter Steve Handelsman live in Denver with reaction to today's guilty verdict. Good evening. Here in Denver tonight, sequestration is over. Members of the jury have gone home for one day's rest before returning here for the penalty phase of this trial. Now that they've made the decision on Timothy McVeigh's guilt that so many here had hoped for. Kay Ice came from court today with her thumb up. A tribute to her brother Paul, killed in the bombing. Two years of frustration pent up and, and we finally got heard the word that we needed to hear. Guilty. Tim McVeigh convicted of mass murder. Once the verdicts were announced, Victoria's prosecutor, Joseph Hartzler, steered his wheelchair into a grateful crowd of bombing survivors and victims' families. Now, Hartzler seeks McVeigh's execution. He put on a strong case that the anti-government drifter planned and carried out the bombing. Now, the same jurors who convicted McVeigh on all 11 counts decide if he's to die. Peggy Brocksterman sashayed from the courthouse, overjoyed at the jury's vote today. Her son Paul died in the bombing. Now, she'll testify about the impact of his murder in the penalty phase that decides McVeigh's sentence. I would like to see him gone. Executed. Gone. The guilty verdicts left some family members unsatisfied, still angry. Until McVeigh is sentenced, some from Oklahoma City are saying there's little sense of relief. It's like one part of this nightmare is over, but we still got a long ways to go. A long way for Stephen Jones and his convicted client. For Jones, time to change gears from proving his client's innocence, his original promise, to pleading for Timothy McVeigh's life. Tim's father, Bill McVeigh, issued a statement today saying he still loves his son. Bill McVeigh may come here to beg this jury for mercy. I'm Steve Handelsman reporting live from outside federal court in Denver. Back to you. Thank you, Steve. Nowhere was today's verdict felt so deeply than in Denver and Oklahoma City. In those two cities, families, friends, and neighbors of the victims relived again and again the memories of the moment where a nation stood still and watched in horror. But the jubilation over justice served was clouded by the memory of lost loved ones. I don't think anyone will ever get over this. I don't even know if this community will ever get over it. I was very pleased and relieved, but then, then saddened also. I feel relieved, but... I feel sad. In Washington, President Clinton called with this quote, a long overdue day for the survivors and families of those who died in Oklahoma City. What is next for Tim McVeigh? The sentencing phase of his trial begins on Wednesday. After that, another trial for the man who allegedly helped carry out the bombing. NBC 5's night team reporter Robin George joins us with more. Robin. Warner McVeigh's conviction doesn't bode well for his alleged accomplice, Terry Nichols. That trial could start as soon as Labor Day. And like McVeigh, Nichols will also be prosecuted by an attorney with a strong Chicago connection. 
Chicago attorney Scott Mendeloff is expected to lead the prosecution in the Nichols trial. He's had a good teacher. We always had confidence in our evidence. Joseph Hartzler, a fellow alum from the U.S. Attorney's Office in Chicago, won big for the government against McVeigh. It's terrific for prosecutors to have someone present a case so thoroughly and professionally. Um, it's also terrific, really, for anybody who's been a, an alumni of the U.S. Attorney's Office here in Chicago. Vince Connolly is a good friend of Hartzler's. Back in the 80s, they played softball together before multiple sclerosis combined Hartzler to a wheelchair, a physical disability that has not stopped his legal prowess. But he did a terrific job of giving the small little pieces of the case uh, to the jury in a way that they could understand it, and then interspersing the enormous emotional content of the whole situation. And now Mendeloff, who worked alongside Hartzler on the McVeigh case, is expected to head up his own case against Terry Nichols, the second suspect charged in the Oklahoma City bombing. He brings the same tools and experience that Joe has, and now obviously he has the decided advantage of having been through uh, the only similar case of its kind. A case where many say the justice system proved it worked. I'm glad that we had due process and it reached a conclusion that I think most Americans can live with. In light of the McVeigh verdict, Terry Nichols' lawyers may ask for a delay in his trial to avoid any negative carryover effect. Warner? As the verdict came down, Timothy McVeigh's father and sister watched on television from their home near Buffalo, New York. Tonight, they have released this statement saying, in part, that even though the jury has found Tim guilty, we still love him very much and intend to stand by him no matter what happens. Timothy McVeigh could be sentenced to death. The penalty phase of his trial begins Wednesday. Here in Chicago at this hour, a woman is in surgery after a freak accident involving a commuter train. It happened at the Randolph Street Metro Station where a South Shore train pinned the woman. NBC5 night team reporter John Mason is at Northwestern Memorial Hospital with the latest. John? Allison, an update now. We are told that Rosetta Prendergast, the victim of this accident, as of about a half hour ago, 25 minutes or so, is now out of surgery still in critical condition. She was brought here to Northwestern Memorial Hospital between 5 and 5.30. Emergency room doctors first fought to save her life, then it was a fight to save her legs. 12,000 people walk the South Shore platform every weekday. Today, for some reason, a Sherrillville, Indiana woman wound up under the 510 train. Um, she, she knew her name, she knew what day it was. Um, besides that, uh, we just kept on talking to her. Commuter Chris Lopez was first to get to the woman. Dr. Mark Rosenblum, first to treat her at Northwestern Memorial. It appeared that uh, both of her legs and her hip probably were caught in between a couple of trains, and there were severe injuries right at her hip level. Police are trying to figure out how the woman wound up on the tracks. Here in the platforms at the Randolph Street Station, the yellow painted line keeps passengers back. It's about three feet away from the edge of the platform, but look between the platform and this South Shore train sitting here on the track. There's about an 18-inch gap. South Shore officials say the woman was not caught between the train and the platform. Train personnel would have seen her. This witness agrees. She was running, you know, waiting for the train. Then she thought the train was leaving, so I think... She probably thought the door was open and she fell through the thing from the pavement and she just got stuck in between. Now at this hour, the uh, Northwestern Memorial medical personnel have not released information whether Rosetta Prendergast's legs were saved in the surgery, the some five hours of surgery she underwent. But an emergency room doctor told us about 90 minutes ago he thought the chances of her possibly keeping one or both of her legs was about 50-50. We'll continue to update this story. Live at Northwestern Memorial, John Mason, NBC5 News. A $1 million bond has been sent for a young West Side woman charged with killing a teenage girl in a prom night tragedy. The victim was 17-year-old Oseline Johnson, a senior at Crane Tech High School. Charged in the stabbing is 22-year-old Melanie Boyd. She allegedly was angry that her ex-boyfriend was Johnson's date for the prom. I never thought Melanie was that serious about it. I didn't. Or I'd have took further precautions. She's not some animal. She's not a stalker. She is a young mother who got herself caught in a bad situation. Johnson's family accuses Boyd of stalking Oseline, but Boyd's relatives insist she acted in self-defense. A 22-year-old man is being held without bond tonight in last week's deadly carjacking. Police say the suspect, Granado Brown, has admitted fatally shooting 24-year-old Joseph Jones. Jones was shot when he tried to foil the carjackers by yanking the wheel of his stolen truck. 
That triggered a chain reaction pileup last Thursday at 57th Street and Lakeshore Drive. Two other suspects in the case are still being sought by police. The FBI has released a new image of what the suspected killer of Lee Migdon looks like. This is the latest computer-enhanced image of Andrew Kuninen. He is suspected of killing Lee Miglin on May 4th and is wanted for two Minneapolis killings and one in New Jersey. Canadian authorities are also on the lookout for Kuninen. It's we shot, you know it, you saw it, ahead on NBC5, what all the Bulls fans are still buzzing about, Michael Jordan at his best. Later, heavy rains now, a flash flood, a big problem tonight for those living in West Virginia. And next, a high school graduation outing turns dangerous at an amusement park when a water slide collapses. NBC5 News is brought to you in part by the City of Chicago Blue Bag Recycling Program. Yard waste. It's illegal to dump it loose in your garbage cart. So if you live in Chicago and you have a black garbage cart, put your grass clippings, leaves, and twigs in a blue bag. Not any other kind of bag. Tie it securely, then put it out with your other blue bags. Now, blue bag recycling is easier than ever. One for yard waste, one for paper, one for cans and bottles. Yard waste. Chicago's got it in the bag. Radio 720 WGN is giving away a Walt Disney World family vacation for four every day for 25 days. Just tune in to WGN, 720 AM, every morning at 720 for the details. Celebrate the 25th anniversary of Walt Disney World as you fly Southwest Airlines with fares that give you the freedom to fly and stay at Disney's Contemporary Resort. 25 Disney family vacations, one a day through June 6th on Radio 720 WGN. When you consider all that goes into making the new Oldsmobile 88 irresistible, like its roomy six-passenger interior, its many extras, its affordable 23200 MSRP, and the fact that 88 is the only full-size car to earn Consumer's Digest Best Buy Award an unprecedented seven years in a row, we couldn't resist adding one more. Now, get $1,500 cash back. 88 by Oldsmobile. Simply irresistible. An amusement park water slide collapses after high school seniors on an outing allegedly ignore warnings to go down one at a time. 33 teenagers are injured tonight, at least seven critically, following that accident in Northern California. Witnesses said some of them fell at least 75 feet when one slide collapsed at the amusement park. Officials say a guard at the top allows only one person at a time to go down the ride, but they say the teens ignored warnings and jumped on altogether. Some of the injured were airlifted to nearby hospitals. One teenager is in extremely critical condition. Tonight, Betty Shabazz, the widow of Malcolm X, clings to life after being burned in a fire. Shabazz is in critical condition with burns covering 80% of her body. People across the country hope she will survive to continue her activism and teaching. I think the one legacy of Betty Shabazz is her warmth and, and commitment to carry out uh, aspects of the work of her husband, Malcolm X. Shabazz's grandson allegedly set the fire in her New York apartment. He is charged with juvenile delinquency and may face other charges. Federal prosecutors produce audio tapes of alleged bribe taking in the silver shovel corruption trial of Chicago Alderman Jesse Evans. The government claims the tapes reveal Evans accepting a series of payoffs. The recordings include an October 1994 exchange between Evans and undercover FBI agent Mark Sophia. So these are, that's a bundle of a thousand, here's another bundle of a thousand, and here's two hundred dollar bills, twenty-two hundred. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Evans' attorney says the payments that he received were campaign contributions. He is asking an appeals court to bar from evidence undercover videotape of the alleged payoffs. Archbishop Francis George makes the last in a series of official welcoming visits throughout the Chicago Archdiocese. <laughs> Archbishop George celebrated Mass tonight at St. Stanislas Koska Parish on West Evergreen Avenue. The evening also included a musical program and a reception following the liturgy. The Archbishop has visited all six vicariates or geographical regions of the Archdiocese since his May 7th installation ceremony. It promises weight loss and more, but ahead on NBC5, why the government is putting out a warning about a dietary supplement. And next, Vintage Michael Jordan, a look at his airness at his best.
For the first time ever, the next generation of minivans are on sale. The Chrysler and Plymouth National Minivan Sale. Get $1,000 cash back on Plymouth Grand Voyager and the Chrysler Town & Country with the features you want. Or get up to $2,000 in total values on select Plymouth Voyagers with air, seven-passenger seating, and more. The biggest selection of award-winning minivans on sale for a limited time. The National Minivan Sale. See the stars of Chicagoland, your local Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. What really happens to the children when parents divorce? Tales of a new study, 25 years in the making, ahead on the NBC5 News. Now, CarX is offering 50% off our most popular mufflers. Half off when you donate to Make-A-Wish. My wish is to visit my grandparents on a farm. And... Help a dream come true for a seriously ill child and save at CarX. Weekend Warriors, prepare for battle. Nowhere in America will you find more of the best brands for your lawn and garden. Great names like Scott's, Honda, and Toro than at the Home Depot, your power equipment headquarters. Michael Jordan adds another layer to his legend with last night's basket that beat the Utah Jazz at the buzzer. Some call it MJ at his best, but even superstars have their less than super moments. NBC 5's Phil Walters explains. We're down to two, down to one. Here's Jordan. Yeah. Proving one more time the difference between man and Superman is not how many shots you make, it's whether you make the shot. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. Nike pays Michael millions to fess up to his clunkers. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game with a shot and missed. But even as he says it, we remember Cleveland in 89. Jordan with two seconds to go, puts it up. It's good at the buzzer. Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago. And again in 93. And now against Utah in 97. We don't remember this shot, or this, or any of the other 11 shots he missed last night. I really uh, was thinking about the, the miss until I made, so I mean, that, that's a great redemption. But mere mortals can panic. No matter how good you are, whether banker, baker, or broadcaster, there's always the chance that at crunch time, up against it, you'll freeze. <laughs> Weathercasters can relate to that too, can't you? It's called the big choke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're starting off June the way we pretty much ended May. You got that right. Yeah, I know. We're working on it. We're working on it. I promise. It's uh, not all that bad out tonight. All right. It's less than ideal for this time of year, but it looks nice. A little video from earlier this evening. Lakeshore Drive looking towards the uh, downtown area, which is terrific, but still on the cool side. Temperature at the tower now at 61 degrees, but humidity very high at 99%. 14 hundredths of an inch of rain today, and a wind coming in off the lake, helping to keep it cool. Well, uh, shall I tell you the obvious? As we look back quickly to the month of May, we averaged 5 degrees per day below average. That makes this the second coldest May recorded at O'Hare. That's pretty chilly, but things will be looking up, at least statistic-wise. We start out with an average high of 76, and we zoom all the way to 83 by the end of the month. We go from 53 for the average low to 61, so at least statistically speaking, temperatures should be going up. The records for this month is uh, hot as 104, but still as chilly as 35. Today's official high at O'Hare was 65. We've cooled off since then to 57. Back to the west where the sun was shining today, it was in the 70s and 80s. They've cooled down now to the 60s and 70s, so it's still fairly comfortable. Well, the showers we had this morning quickly eroded away through the course of the day. We're relatively dry right now, but for some spotty drizzle, and I think that'll be the case through the overnight hours. And tomorrow should be a dry day as well. As you look at the U.S. satellite picture, you notice there's a circulation here to the clouds. This is an ever-persistent pressure of low pressure that's been spinning away, pushing in to the Ohio Valley. This is what's brought the northeast flow off the lake and brought in the clouds, the cool conditions, and the showers this morning. This will gradually continue to push off to the east-northeast tomorrow, keeping the confined area of rainfall to the east of us. 
After some clouds and a little fog in the morning, we should break up to some sunshine. The storms will stay to the west and back to the Pacific Northwest. High temperatures tomorrow still below the averages. We should struggle to near 70. It'll be cooler along the lakefront and then a little bit warmer as the rest of the week wears on, but never really warm this week. During the overnight hours, we'll have cloudy skies down to the low 50s. Tomorrow, lots of clouds to start the day, just a few peaks of sunshine, maybe some haze and patchy fog. 55 to start, near 70 inland tomorrow, but northeast winds will keep it cooler near the lake by 10 to 15 degrees. As we look ahead to Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, looks beautiful in the low 70s, plenty of sunshine. Next chance of showers looks like not till sometime late Saturday, but the ever-present cooler near the lake, so don't forget your jackets and sweaters. Again, you'll need them. All Thank right. you. But no umbrellas. No That's umbrellas. That's good. good. We'll look at some bad weather to our east. Heavy rains in northeast Ohio are pushing rivers and streams over their banks. Near Cleveland, the Cayuga River is expected to crest as high as six feet over flood stage. High water is forcing evacuations of homes and businesses. Some motorists traveling in low-lying areas found themselves forced to abandon their stranded cars. Areas of southern, south, southwestern Virginia are dealing with flash floods caused by heavy rains. Up to seven inches of rain has fallen since Sunday night. Two people died when they fell into a rain-swollen creek while trying to reach higher ground. And also parts of North Carolina are hit by severe weather. Major thunderstorms were accompanied by high winds, hail up to an inch in diameter, and flooding. Damage was reported in the town of Cary, that's near Raleigh. The storm system reportedly created what's known as a scud cloud, which can turn into a tornado. But fortunately, no twisters were reported. This may be the toughest game of the year coming up. Yeah, game two should be rough. If you listen closely, you can still hear that cheering over at the United Center. Last night, number 23 served up another round ball classic. And while the latest Michael moment lives on, the Bulls are moving on, focusing on all the work ahead. We show and tell in sports. And what effect does divorce have on children? Results of a new study next. Later on in all news tonight show, take a trip into a lost world more terrifying than any blockbuster movie. My God, would you look at that money? Plus, actress Renee Russo, the National Geography Bee champ, and headlines. Steve Sue says police mishandled his booty. Stay up for Jay with Renee Russo tonight. Then on Conan, Alec Baldwin with a look at his newest character. Plus, Penelope Ann Miller, killer reptiles, and the loser at the ski slope shows off his... Yeah, you don't want to know. As face prints, let me say, you could say, say cheese with Walmart. Or, say cheese with Kmart. You could certainly say, say cheese with Target. Or even say, say cheese with Sears. But isn't it so natural when you say, say cheese with Ritz? Because we're Ritz camera centers. Now you're clicking. <laughs> For all famous cameras, the advanced photo system, and those big prints from Ritz One Hour Photo. Say cheese with Ritz. For graduations, weddings, and Father's Day this June, Circuit City has a gift for everybody. All Sony boomboxes and portable CD players are on sale. Like this Sony Discman, just $69.99. This Zenith VCR with remote is only $129.99. This JVC VHSC camcorder is a low $399.99. And this Sharp 3-disc mini audio system is only $149.99. And pick up Jerry Maguire for only $14.95. Circuit City, you can't get a lower price. We guarantee it. This is the car. This is the lease. This is the time. Time to see your Lincoln dealer for your 1997 Lincoln Town Car. Now just $4.99 a month with just $9.99 down. This is the car. Lincoln Town Car. Inside and out, this is what a luxury car should be. This is the lease. Just $4.99 a month and only $9.99 down. This is the time because this offer ends June 3rd. So see your Lincoln dealer now. Francesco La Fabula has just created the little black dress that will change everything. The magazines have created a frenzy, and you have sworn that your stores will be the first to carry it. Enter UPS. Customs gets cleared electronically. The global network kicks in. Also that at the same time, on the same day, the dresses arrive from Europe to each of your stores nationwide. Success is a beautiful thing. Nice dress. UPS, moving at the speed of business. Real-time closed captioning of NBC5 News is brought to you by Advil, advanced medicine for pain. No non-prescription pain reliever is proven to last longer than Advil.
When parents divorce, there are consequences for children, and according to a new study, many future problems. The study says children of divorce have a pattern of drug and alcohol abuse, have less education and lower earning power than their parents had. Researchers say they studied 60 middle-class families over 25 years. The findings were released at a conference on family and children's rights in California. A warning from the Food and Drug Administration. If you take the dietary supplement ephedrine, you may lose more than just weight. The FDA says the drug has been linked to at least 17 deaths and 800 injuries. As a result, the government wants to dramatically cut the dosage of ephedrine in pills, tablets, and teas that promise to help people lose weight and feel more energetic. Well, let's turn to sports right now. I guess what's on the mind of all of us is the Bulls. Absolutely. And even though they say you can never get too much of a good thing, the Bulls have already put last night's Be Like Mike moment in their rearview mirror. That's not because they don't understand how to savor the moment. The world champs simply have more work to be done. Here's Jordan. Yeah. Here's Jordan. Yeah. Here's Jordan. Yeah. It was the shot heard round the hoop world. Mike just being Mike, sticking a game one dagger into Utah. What Mike want to prove one and show the world that he's still the greatest player in the world. Yeah. And he did it. What better player would you want the ball in his hands than Michael? And while the entire city of Chicago is grooving on Jordan's good vibrations, the Jazz and the Bulls are leaving Sunday night fever behind. If it's it, it giving us a championship, then great. I talk about it all summer long. But if I see him talk about one shot in the first game, you know, the other games have slipped right past us. It's never fun to have that, go to sleep at night with that in your mind, but, but I, I don't think it, it kills you. Fresh off scoring 27 points on a bum left foot, Scotty takes today off and will likely do the same tomorrow. I'm going to continue to do my therapy, and uh, it'll take a lot of the soreness out, and that allows me to do things on the court that I normally can do. And as the Bulls' quest for basketball's holy grail rolls on Wednesday night, their sights seem to be clearly focused. We only have one win, you know, and I don't think this, and our best interest to start patting each other on the back yet. You know, we got three more wins and know that are probably the toughest three wins that we're going to be able to get all season long. That's right. And don't forget for all the game two scoops, set your dial, lock it in for another Take 5 pregame special, 7.30 on Wednesday night. Now down in the Magic Kingdom, well, Chuck Daly back in the coaching business. He works a new five-year, $15 million deal to take over the Orlando Club. And as Dennis says, money truly talks. There's no surprise, you know. <laughs> You get five, six million dollars a year to make you come on anything, right? <laughs> and while Dennis was excited for his former coach, the mailman delivers a different message. You think I really give a shit about who took the job in my in, in Orlando right now? Good luck to him, I guess. Hopefully you don't get overruled down there. <laughs> Whatever you say, big man. At the ballpark, no, we all know it's not easy streaking with your clothes on. But over the last few weeks, Albert Bell's done just that. Tonight in Milwaukee, he tries to build on a team record 27-game hitting streak. His first at bat, a pop-out. Number two, a walk. His third try, ditto. Another walk. At bat number four, another fly out. And number five, check it out. It's high. It's deep. This one's got a chance. No. No. Forget about it. Bell 0 for 3 with two walks. His hitting streak over at 27 consecutive games. And here we go. Tied up, top of the ninth, Mike Cameron gets into one. It drops in, rolls around. Frank Thomas scores. Lyle Mouton scores. Cameron gets the triple. Right now, bottom of the ninth, Sox lead Milwaukee 8 to 5. Now, relatively speaking, the Cubs on a serious roll. And they can thank Brant Brown this evening. The left fielder goes three for three, including this solo home run in the fourth. Brown leads them to their first three game winning streak. Cubs win, Cubs win, 3 2. Other notes to pass, number two seed Michael Chang is toast at the French Open, and B.J. Singh takes the title at the Memorial Golf Tourney. To finish things up tonight, a Taiwan Evil Knievel jumps into his car and jumps more than 150 feet. Like they say, please, fasten your seat belts and put your tray in the upright position. That is sports. you got to be kidding me. Man. <laughs> Thanks, John. She is one of the most recognized women in the world, and now you can dress just like her. June 25th, Christie's Auction House in London will sell more than 70 dresses worn by Princess Diana. The dresses went on display today. They were worn by Diana during her 15-year marriage to Prince Charles. How much money will they bring? Sales of the catalog featuring the auction have brought in more than a million dollars.
and the good news is it's all going to charity. Yes. Well, a Buffalo, you've got to see to believe. That's next. But first, take a look at the lottery numbers. Tomorrow on First Thing in the Morning. If you drove to work on Monday, you know it was a blue Monday morning rush. Here's hoping Tuesday's a lot better. Travel times every 10 minutes. And in the weather, oh, yes, I do see some improvement, but it's slow to come. I'll have a forecast. Tomorrow on First Thing in the Morning. Committed to Chicago. It's a special moment. So don't take chances. Take your film to Osco. Where special moments get special care. We correct for color, contrast, and exposure. So what you get back may be even better than what you brought in. Plus, with every set of 4x6 jumbo prints, you get a second set free. And with every set of 5x7 big shot prints, you get a second set free. Only at Oscar. medical coverage when you travel. Tomorrow on the NBC5 News at 4.30. If a dog attacked your child, how would your child respond? Responding the right way could save them from being bit and save their life. Tomorrow on the NBC5 News at 4.30. Committed to Chicago. For the first time ever, the next generation of minivans are on sale. The Chrysler and Plymouth National Minivan Sale. Get $1,000 cash back on Plymouth Grand Voyager and the Chrysler Town & Country with the features you want. Or get up to $2,000 in total values on select Plymouth Voyagers with air, seven-passenger seating, and more. The biggest selection of award-winning minivans on sale for a limited time. The National Minivan Sale. See the stars of Chicagoland, your local Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. We don't have sales. We have everyday low prices. Somebody does happen to run a special. We're going to beat it. We don't want them to have to travel 20 miles to the next place to go get that item that's on sale when we can take care of their needs here. Why do you need sales? To me, that's just saying to the customer, well, okay, we're going to jack up our prices, and then every once in a while we're going to give the customer a break. It's not at Home Depot. We give customers a break every day. We're really good with this price thing. I, you know, I like this. It's bargain into the bedrock of the store. You always get it for less at Home Depot. It is a rare, rare sight, a snow white buffalo, and it's now on exhibit at the National Buffalo Museum in Jamestown, North Dakota. The albino buffalo is a female on loan to the museum for the next five years. According to folk tradition, white animals are good luck. And with the horrendous flooding in North Dakota, it has endured this year, well, they can use all the luck that they can get, a white buffalo. We just saw one for the first time. That is the news for now. Thank you for joining us. Good, good night, night, everybody.